Okay, folks, Mr. Don here again, and I'm going to show you a real brief how do we do limiting reactant stoichiometry calculations. Uh, in this case, we have a balanced chemical equation already. Uh, just a reminder, just make sure if you have a chemical equation, remember that's like our recipe. If we don't have those numbers out front, you need to get those, those coefficients. They need to be in there because that is telling you the ratios at which things need to be added together to get this thing to work correctly. Um, but in this case, I've given that to you. Uh, so we have a situation here where we have 15 moles of N2 and 20 moles of H2. And I'd like to know, what is our limiting reactant? What is our excess reactant? And how much NH3 can we make? Um, so in essence, it's like saying, hey, you go back to your shelf or go back to your lab station and I have this much of each ingredient at your lab table. Um, the problem is, is if we just mix those together, it's very possible that one of these actually is not going to have enough to react with the other. And that might not be a big deal, but it might also be a big deal because what if one of these things we don't want in our final mixture of NH3? Then we'd have to figure out a way to get rid of that. Well, a better way to do that is to figure out, well, which of these would run out first? That's your limiting reactant. And then whichever that tells you the other thing would be excess and then we would just figure out how much of the excess to add to our limiting and that will allow us to better figure out how much NH3 we can make and then it won't have any extra of the other ingredient mixed in there because that would be like a contaminant we have to deal with that so how do we do that well first thing is always make sure your equation is balanced check second thing then is we are going to set up a stoichiometry proportion where we do a calculation that says with each ingredient, both the 15 moles of N2 and the 20 moles of H2, how much of a product will they make? Well, in this case, it's easy because we only have the one product, NH3. So we're going to do that. So we do two of these, right? So again, remember, what does the question want us to find? We want to put that on top. What does the question give us? That goes on the bottom, or what is the given? And on this, I'm just going to go in order here. So I have, the question has given me the fact that I have 15 moles of N2. And the question is tasking me with finding how much NH3 can we make. So that's going to be what I'm trying to find. In this case, it's going to be moles of NH3. Well, those units have to transfer to the other side. So if we have moles of NH3 on one side on the top, we've got to make sure it's on the top on both sides. And if we have moles of N2 on the bottom, we've got to make sure it's on the bottom on both sides. So I'm just going to transfer that straight over there. Now here, again, the question becomes, what numbers do we put in front of this and where do we find those numbers? Now the key here is the units. In this case, it is moles. Okay, so what we have to understand is if it's moles, remember that's what the units are in our chemical equation. This is really saying, one mole of N2 will react with three moles of H2, and when they react together, they will create two moles of NH3. There's enough N atoms and enough hydrogen atoms to make this many groups of NH3. Well, that means we just need these numbers. We don't need the periodic table in this case because the units here are not grams. If the units here were grams, then we would need to use these moles and we would need to incorporate how much does three moles of H2 weigh, how much does one mole of N2 weigh, how much does two moles of NH3 weigh. We'd need to incorporate that into here using the periodic table. But in this case, we don't need to do that. So what we do do, <laughs> what we do do is actually just look at our balanced equation and put those numbers then in our proportion. So NH3, we find NH3, we need two moles. N2, we find N2, we need one mole. And basically this is just saying for every one of the N2s you have, there is enough atoms of nitrogen in there to make two moles of NH3, okay? So then we solve it, it's a cross multiply question, right? And when we solve for X here, we're gonna get that X is 30, and the units there is moles of NH3. Now again, we've got to take a step back and say, okay, what does this actually tell us? This is actually telling us that if all 15 moles of N2 are reacted, it is enough to make 30 moles of our NH3 product. 
If all 15 of these react, it's enough to make 30 of the NH3s. But we don't know yet if that is going to be the case because we have another ingredient in there and that other ingredient is H2. Okay, so again, set it up. What does the question want us to find? What does the question give us? What is our given? In this case, we are given the fact that we have 20 moles of H2. And the want is still the same. We still want to figure out how many moles of NH3 we have. So I'm going to just keep that the same on top. And again, transfer those units over, right? So we're going to have moles of NH3 on the top on both sides, and we're going to have moles of H2 on the bottom on both sides. And then we look at this and say, okay, again, it's moles. So that means I just need the numbers from our equation. Equation says you're going to make two moles of NH3. And our equation says if you have three moles of H2. So this is just, again, telling you if you have three moles of H2, it's enough particles of H to make two moles of NH3. But we're kind of amping that up to 20 moles. So we're going to see, like, what number X would be then. Okay? So when you saw that, again, it's a cross-multiply question. And we just solve for X. In this case, X is going to equal 13.33 moles. It's actually 33 repeated, if you care. Moles of NH3. So now we've got to take that step back. And we've got to say, okay, what did we just find there? Well, this is saying if, again, the keyword if, all 20 moles of H2 were used, it is enough to make 13.33 moles of NH3. So the question then is, what is our answer for these? The limiting reactant, remember, is always the one that creates the lowest amount of product. So this is saying that our limiting reactant, it's not actually the NH3, it's actually the H2. The H2 only has enough to make 13.33 moles of NH3. This right here then is showing us our excess reactant. And the excess reactant isn't NH3. Oops, sorry. The excess reactant is actually the N2. The N2, there's enough of the N2 to make 30 moles, which means there is extra or excess N2. We have more than we need because it's enough to make extra NH3. So the limiting reactant here is H2. The excess reactant is N2. And then the question, how much NH3 can we make? Well, it's whichever creates the lowest amount of product. Okay. Once we have made 13.33 moles of NH3, what happens? Well, that means all of our H2 just got used. We have no more H2 left over because it has all been used to create the H's on this NH3, which means we have nothing in terms of this ingredient once that ingredient, once that reactant runs out, the reaction stops. We have extra N2s, but we have no H's to react with it. And that's what that's telling us. So if you have any questions, again, please leave those in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope this is helpful and enjoy the rest of your day.